I've always loved a good horror story. Not the gory, jump, scare kind, but the kind that sits with you. A shadow lurking in the back of your mind even after you've turned off the lights. I spend hours weaving my own tales on those dark corners of the internet, where creepypastas thrive. Nothing fancy, just twisted little stories that give voice to those fears that gnaw at all of us under the surface. My name is Sarah, Sarah Miller. No one would call me a horror aficionado. My stories aren't famous, and I don't crave that kind of recognition. Writing is a private thing for me, a way to face the unsettling thoughts that pop up when you spend too much time in your own head. Things get dark in there sometimes. The latest little monster I brought to life, a story I called The Silhouette, started gaining traction online a few weeks ago. It's about a woman who starts seeing a shadowy figure out of the corner of her eye, a figure that only grows stronger in contrast to fading light. It's full of the subtle kind of horror I love. The uncanny, that niggling feeling that something isn't quite right. The silhouette seemed to resonate with people. Usually, my stories get a handful of comments, a few upvotes, and then vanish into the internet's bottomless maw. This one, though, it started getting shared, dissected, debated. There was something visceral about the reactions, a level of discomfort that went beyond typical spook. Story thrills. I liked the attention until I didn't. It began with a trickle of odd messages. Stuff like, did this ever happen to you? It feels familiar. Too familiar. Some people even swore they saw the shadow from my story lurking behind them. At first, I chuckled. Overactive imaginations. Fans having some fun playing along. Then, scratching noises started coming from the walls of my apartment. Just faint, barely audible little sounds. I figured mice or a squirrel in the attic. Old buildings are full of them. Yet, the scratching always seemed to happen at dusk as if something was moving in sync with the waning light. One morning, I swore I saw a flicker of movement in the hallway mirror as I brushed my teeth. A tall, elongated shape, darker than the shadows around it. I spun around, heart pounding, but there was nothing there. That's when the uneasy feeling in my gut turned into something colder, something like fear. The line I'd always drawn so clearly between my stories and my reality was beginning to smudge. I told myself it was the stress, the odd messages, and the way the deepening shadows of my apartment seemed to writhe and pulse in the dim winter light. Maybe the, the internet was getting to me. After all, I spent a worrying amount of time scrolling through disturbing threads, soaking my brain in twisted tales and chilling rumors. Maybe that stuff was creeping out into my waking life, like a dark stain spreading across a clean sheet. But you know what they say, just because you're paranoid doesn't mean they're not out to get you. I tried to push the fear down, to dismiss it as overwork and an overactive imagination fueled by too many creepypasta binges. But as another day ended, and twilight cast its long, creeping shadows across my apartment, that familiar dread started its slow climb up my spine. I'd tried everything, blasting loud music, keeping every single light burning, even going for a long walk to exhaust myself. Nothing worked. The silence when I finally returned felt heavy, oppressive. Each room seemed darker, the corners pooling with inky blackness. It was ridiculous, but I couldn't bring myself to check the mirrors. I couldn't face the possibility of seeing that elongated, unnatural shape lurking behind me again. I busied myself with pointless tasks, hoping distraction would make the time pass faster. But the clock seemed to be frozen. The scratching started again, a rhythmic rasping against the wall behind my bed. I pulled the covers tighter around me, desperately wishing for morning. There was a new element to the sound now, a wetness, almost like something was dragging along the plaster. Every scratch sent a fresh surge of panic through me. Unable to bear it any longer, I sat bolt upright in bed. Stop it, please. Just stop, I shouted, my voice shaking. 
Of course, nothing answered. The scratching continued. A direct taunt that sent ice through my veins. The decision was impulsive, driven more by terror than bravery. I swung my legs off the bed and padded across the cold floor to my bedroom door. Each step felt monumentally heavy. I reached out, fingers trembling, and flipped the light switch. Nothing. The overhead light fixture, usually a sickly yellow glow, stayed off. I flipped the switch again and again. Still nothing. Frantic. I stumbled through the dark apartment, switching on lamps and ceiling fixtures with the same result. The power was out. Darkness clung to me, thick and suffocating. In the dim glow filtering through the window, I could just make out the shape of my living room couch. I edged towards it and then something slammed hard against my window. I let out a yelp, my entire body vibrating with horrified surprise. A shadow moved across the curtain, huge and misshapen. It couldn't be real, couldn't be. I squeezed my eyes shut, counted to 10 and dared to open them again. The shadow was still there writhing as if struggling against an unseen force. I was seeing things. The stress, the fear. Everything was twisting my perception. Backing away slowly, I tripped over the corner of my rug and fell to the floor with a thud. Something shifted in the darkness behind me, and the hair on the back of my neck stood straight up. Slowly, I turned to look toward the hallway mirror on the opposite wall. Even in the meager light, the reflection was clear. There, standing in the darkness, was the silhouette. The same twisted shape from the silhouette story, real and undeniably present in my home. My mind froze. I couldn't even scream. Every horror I'd ever written about, every monster my mind had conjured in dark hours. Was it somehow standing before me now? Was this a nightmare? An elaborate breakdown? Or had my stories acted like some terrifying summoning spell, pulling a creature born from shadows into this world? It was impossible, utterly impossible. Yet the shadowed figure pulsed in the mirror's depths, its elongated limbs bending at unnatural angles as if trapped in the reflective surface. I wanted to run, scream, do anything other than continue staring, but I couldn't move. It was like a horrifying car crash. Morbid fascination held me rooted to the spot. There was a subtle shift in the creature, as if it had become aware of my scrutiny. One spindly arm stretched out from the mirror and traced slow circles on the glass. I knew it couldn't actually touch me, couldn't breach the barrier between our worlds, but some primal part of me screamed to run. A faint scratching sound echoed from the direction of my bedroom the scratching that had haunted my twilight hours. It was different this time, more insistent, less like something clawing on the other side of the wall and more like something, tracing, like something writing. I forced my gaze back to the mirror. There, etched into the glass like words carved into ice, was a phrase in a spidery scrawl. Feed me. My stomach churned. Had I written this? Sleepwalking or some kind of fugue state brought on by the stress of everything. No, the letters didn't match my handwriting. Besides, there wasn't a tool in my apartment sharp enough to leave a marking like that. I heard a soft hiss, almost like a whisper. It was coming from the window I'd been thrown against earlier. In the brief flicker where the light filtered outside, I saw it. A symbol, crudely scratched into the glass a complex knot of lines and curves. This symbol, I'd seen it before, but I couldn't place it. Was it from one of my other stories? My mind felt sluggish, grasping at threads of memories that dissolved under the pressure of terror. The symbol, the phrase in the mirror, they felt significant was this. Some kind of test, something the creature was setting up. And what did it mean by feed? Did these messages offer a way out, or were they just playing another layer of a cruel game? Suddenly, the scratching in the bedroom stopped. The silence was louder than any noise. I felt the entity's attention shift, 
that impossible gaze boring into me from within the mirror. Taking a shaky breath, I looked at the symbol on the window. It throbbed, almost, seeming to shift and distort as I stared. That's when it hit me. It was the symbol from another one of my stories. A twisted, unsettling piece I'd written about a cult that summoned shadow creatures to enact their vengeance. Could the symbol have been a key ingredient in their ritual? I wasn't sure what compelled me, whether it was fear, desperation, or the thinnest flicker of hope. But it struck me as the one thing I could do to regain even a shred of control in this impossible situation. I took a kitchen knife from the cutlery block. The blade glinted dully in the pale light. With a deep breath, I mirrored the symbol as best I could, carving it into the old wooden surface of my bedside table. If the symbol was some kind of activation, well, maybe it worked both ways. The moment I finished carving the symbol into my bedside table, the room felt different. The air thickened, the shadows pooled even deeper, and the creature in the mirror seemed to writhe with greater fervor. Had I just made things worse, a new wave of nausea washed over me. Why on earth had I done that? Then I saw it. A faint, shimmering line traced itself from the mirror across the floor and directly towards the symbol carved on the table. The light flowing along this path was oily, unhealthy, and utterly alien to my apartment. My heart hammered in my chest. It was like I'd created a bridge, a connection between the creature's world and my own. I wanted to run, scream, break the table, anything to sever that connection, but I couldn't look away. The line reached the table and flowed upwards, tracing along the crude lines of my counter. Symbol, as it did, the symbol carved on the window began to fade. And then the creature in the mirror, it seemed to sag, its form dissolving, flowing down into the mirror's depths as if being pulled by gravity towards that glowing line. It was disappearing. Had I done it? Was it over? But just before the creature vanished entirely, it paused, and another phrase seemed to burn itself into the mirror, this time in a scrawl I chillingly recognized as my own handwriting. Betrayal leads to hunger. The words, along with the last remnants of the creature, dissolved back into the mirror's surface, leaving it blank and quiet. What had just happened? Had I won or simply moved on to the next, even more dangerous phase of this horrifying game? The symbol on my bedside table still faintly glowed. I felt an odd pull towards it, accompanied by an unsettling sense of hunger in the pit of my stomach an empty, gnawing hunger that didn't feel like any normal need for food. Confused, my mind tried to grasp at the situation. The phrase feed me in the mirror, and this strange, unnatural hunger. Was the entity trying to lure me into its world? Was there a way to sustain it through feeding on my energy or emotions? Did the betrayal it mentioned refer to me carding the symbol, somehow playing against its rules? Questions hammered through my mind, each more horrifying than the last. I had to stop the entity, had to find a way to sever this connection. But how? My gaze fell upon the still glowing symbol. I needed to understand its meaning. I needed to understand the language of shadows. I grabbed my laptop, the light from the screen stark against the almost oppressive darkness. I searched through the piles of half-finished stories, Notes and online threads that littered my desktop and hard drives. Somewhere, amongst the fragments and twisted snippets of my imagination, was the key I needed. And I wasn't going to rest until I found it. My fingers flew across the keyboard as I desperately searched my old stories. The symbol seemed familiar, but the more I stared at it, the more it seemed like a shifting maze of lines. Making my tired eyes ache, the gnawing hunger intensified, but I shoved it down. It couldn't be real, right? After what felt like hours, I found it. The symbol, or something eerily similar, hidden within a half-written story about a girl investigating her village's dark history. In the story, 
The symbol was a mark left by something the locals called a Shadow Walker, a being summoned through a botched ritual and then bound to serve those who knew its language. My mind spun back to the creature in the mirror. Its hunger, the phrases it had scrawled, that line of light it had disappeared into. The pieces started to fit together, making a horrifying kind of sense. The symbol wasn't an activation, it was a leash. And by mimicking it, I'd likely played right into the entity's hands. Betrayal leads to hunger, it had written. Was its betrayal tricking it into being bound to me? It seemed my desperate act hadn't banished the creature. It had merely shifted the balance of power. That hunger twisting my gut had to be a result of this unholy connection. Maybe I was feeding it by just feeling things. If fear had fueled it before, what might happen now? I had to break this bond, but first I needed to understand more. I dove back into the old story. The Shadow Walkers weren't creatures born of pure evil. They were described as twisted echoes of people's desires, given substance by warped rituals and then horribly bound into servitude. Could the entity in my apartment be something similar? A manifestation of my own fears and anxieties, given terrible form by the obsessive attention the silhouette had attracted online? But what about its hunger, the symbols, the symbols the sense of something distinctly other. Questions buzzed in my brain. Suddenly, another passage in the old story caught my eye. There was a way to banish a shadow walker, but it was a dangerous gamble. The summoner had to confront it directly, using the symbols and their understanding of its true nature to sever the binding. It was risky, and failure would lead to. That gnawing hunger in my gut intensified, now laced with a cold dread. Doing nothing meant being slowly consumed, but this confrontation could be my doom. Was this what the entity wanted? To lure me into a confrontation I couldn't possibly win? To feed on my desperation? A chilling possibility hit me then. What if the scratching in the walls, the messages, all of it had been a setup, leading me to this moment where I felt I had only two options? be devoured piece by piece or risk it all in a desperate act of defiance. Yet, the thought of simply succumbing to the shadow creature was unbearable. All my life, all my life, I'd grappled with the dark corners of my own mind facing those unsettling thoughts through my stories. I wasn't about to let some twisted manifestation of those fears consume me now. It would be a fight. Me against myself, in a way. And that was a kind of horror story I knew how to navigate. The screen of my laptop was a beacon of light in the suffocating darkness. But the words I scrolled through only brought more fear. Every detail about the Shadow Walkers seemed to mirror my experiences. It was as if the creature in my apartment was straight out of some ancient, forgotten manual on summoning nightmares. The hunger gnawing within me intensified with each line I read. It wasn't a physical need, but a deep unease that wormed its way into my thoughts. This connection I'd created. It was feeding on me. My emotions and fears twisting into sustenance for this dark, mirrored version of myself. The longer I waited, the stronger it would get. The story spoke of a ritual to sever the bond. A direct confrontation where the summoner would use their knowledge of the entity's symbols and its true nature to cast it back into the abyss of its origin. It was a desperate gamble, but it seemed like my only chance. I grabbed a notebook and pen. Time was of the essence, and I needed to organize my thoughts. Everything I understood about the shadow creature went down in frantic scrawls. Its language of symbols. Its language of symbols. Its need for fear and darkness. Its potential ties to my own stories. Each detail was a potential tool, a potential weakness. And at the core of it was the silhouette. It seemed more than coincidence that the entity's appearance aligned so perfectly with my viral story. My words, fueled by the collective fascination and fear of hundreds of internet strangers, had seemingly woven it into reality. Suddenly, I was sure of it. The creature was born of that story, 
and the key to defeating it lay in understanding its origin within the twisted landscape of my own imagination. I began writing again, not a new story, but an analysis of the old one, picking apart my own work, searching for the seed of darkness within it that had now sprouted into monstrous reality. The gnawing hunger intensified, and there was a new layer to it now, a sense of urgency, of impatience. The creature wanted me to give in to fear, to lose myself in despair. But the more I understood, the more a flicker of defiance grew within me. I wasn't just its victim, I was its creator. And that meant I was its biggest threat. As morning light began to filter hesitantly through the curtains, I knew what I had to do. Tonight, I would confront the shadow creature in its domain, somewhere in that terrible space behind the mirror, and I would reclaim my story. Fear coiled in my gut, but there was a fierce determination beneath it. I couldn't let this thing consume me. It was an abomination made from my creativity, but it wasn't the sum of it. I still had the power to change the narrative. I spent the day shoring up my defenses. Every window in my apartment was covered with thick blankets, plunging the space into near. Total darkness. It played to the creature's strength, but I needed to control the environment for my plan. I found candles, flashlights, anything I could use to break through the oppressive gloom. I scrawled protective symbols I'd read about across the apartment. Wards against darkness. Symbols that, according to legends, might hold back beings of shadow probably useless, but it felt better than doing nothing. Then, I focused on myself, nourishing food, trying to calm my breathing. I even dared a brief, bracing shower, washing away the grime of fear that seemed to cling to my skin. With every act of self-care, the hunger in my gut seemed to recede a fraction, and my resolve grew stronger. As the day bled into twilight, an almost unbearable anticipation thrummed through me. I sat vigil by the hallway mirror, waiting for any sign of the creature's return. The symbol on the bedside table was a chilling reminder. I'd created this link, and now I had to shatter it. The mirror loomed before me, its surface a vast, empty darkness. There was a subtle shift in the air, a thickening, almost like the space around the mirror was bending to accommodate something. The gnawing hunger in my gut was less of a physical ache now and more of a psychic pull, drawing me in. I took a shaky breath, the candlelight painting flickering shadows on the wall. It was time. This confrontation was more than a fight for survival. It felt like a twisted kind of literary test. My own story had become the final exam, and failure wasn't an option. I reached out and placed my hands flat against the cool surface of the mirror. It should have felt solid, Yet my fingertips seemed to sink ever so slightly, an unnatural chill spreading out. Words from the old story I'd read whirled in my mind. Shadow walkers are beings of reflection, of twisted desires. To break the hold, you must shatter the illusion. I focused on the reflection of myself in the dark glass. It was warped, elongated, a grotesque echo that sent a fresh wave of panic through me. No, not me. This was a distorted mirror image conjured by the creature. Its fuel was my fear. I wouldn't let it have that. Taking another shaky breath, I closed my eyes. I banished the image of the monstrous reflection, replacing it with memories of warmth, of light. My childhood home filled with laughter, the joy of creating something from nothing, the simple pleasure of a good book. They were simple things, Ordinary life against the extraordinary horror, but somehow felt potent. This was me, the heart of me that the creature couldn't touch. The gnawing pull intensified, the hunger morphing into a kind of angry demand. But underneath it was a hint of confusion. Opening my eyes, I dared to look back into the mirror. The distortion still lingered in the reflection, but it was less pronounced. I pressed a palm hard against the glass. The mirror rippled like disturbed water and an answering ripple echoed back at me, like a dark hand tentatively reaching out. 
an idea sparked. If this was a reflection, a space formed of symbols and shadows, maybe I could shift the narrative. Think. The silhouette was a study in creeping dread, atmosphere over violence. Its power was in suggestion, the unseen things lurking just beyond the light. Turning that back on the creature, turning its own tricks against it felt like the answer. I pulled a pen from my pocket. The hunger intensified, the reflected space swirling chaotically. The entity wanted me to panic, to lose myself in darkness. Instead, carefully, deliberately, I started to draw on the mirror's surface, not symbols of protection, but those of mundane reality, a lopsided sun, a simple house, a stick figure dog, childish things that spoke of security and innocence. With each crude drawing, the mirror's resistance increased, the dark surface rippling and pulling against the pen. The hunger was a scream in my mind now, demanding, furious. I choked back the fear, focusing on the simple shapes. It felt ridiculous. These tiny sketches against the impossible. But with each line, the reflected room behind me seemed to lose its distorted edge. The warped shadows receding a fraction. Suddenly, with a crack like a whip, the mirror shattered. Not an explosion outwards, but inwards as if the glass was sucked into the darkness it contained. The monstrous reflection stretched and shrieked inhumanly, then vanished with the glass, leaving only an empty frame behind. My heart hammered like a drumbeat in the sudden silence. Had I? Was it over? But just as the thought crossed my mind, the gnawing hunger returned with a vengeance. It was different now, tied with a hot rage. A whisper from the empty frame made me freeze. A hiss from the darkness. You will not deny me. My blood ran cold. It wasn't over. Not by a long shot. The mirror was gone, but not the space the mirror had led to. The creature was still out there, trapped and furious. And I was still bound to it somehow. The whisper came again, a mocking echo. What will you do now, Ryder? spend eternity hiding in the dark. It had a point. I'd won a battle, maybe, but not the war. This connection couldn't be ignored. It would consume me slowly, even if I hid forever. I needed to finish this, find the heart of that mirror dimension, and sever this link. Or die trying. But how? Could I even enter that space? The symbol still glowed faintly on my bedside table. I knelt before it, my touch sending ripples of oily light through the carving. The mirror was gone, but this was still a doorway, and desperate times called for desperate measures. There might be a way to force my way through, to make this a two-way street. I closed my eyes and focused everything I had, every ounce of creative will, into imagining the symbol as a conduit. It pulsed beneath my fingertips, and then a jolt shot up my arm. A surge of freezing cold that nearly made me black out. When I reopened my eyes, I knew I wasn't in my apartment anymore. The world on the other side of the symbol was a place of warped reflections. My once familiar apartment lay in ruins, not through decay, but as if some twisted artist had taken it apart and reassembled it wrong. Light bent at unnatural angles, casting multiple impossible shadows from every object. It was like stepping into a living cubist painting. The hunger that had pulled me here was amplified a thousandfold. No longer a gnawing within, but a pressure from outside. It clawed at my mind, urging me to give in, to just let it consume me and end the torment. But underneath the crushing need was a flicker of the creature's own confusion. It had been expecting fear, a meal easily devoured. My defiance was a flavor it didn't understand. Suddenly, the symbol on the table in. What was left of my living room glowed brighter, searing a path of light towards a familiar shape. The hallway mirror, a perfect rectangle of pure darkness against the distorted space. It had to be the lair, the source of the entity. 
Each step pulsed with the creature's hungry rage. It seemed impossible to maintain any sense of self in this place. The very air tried to twist me, to make me part of its distorted landscape. I fought back with memories, bright snatches of simple joys, the feeling of the sun on my face, the smell of a well-worn book. It kept the hunger at bay, but only just. I reached the mirror. Unlike its counterpart in the real world, this one warped and bulged outwards like some terrible tumorous growth. The creature thrashed within it, its inhuman screeching barely contained by the glass. My head throbbed, and blood trickled from my nose. The bond between us was excruciating, pulling me towards the mirror even as it held the creature captive. I needed to use its need against it. Focus. Remember, the silhouette was a tale of the unseen, of creeping horror. The creature had fed on my own fear, twisting the shadows of my imagination into a monstrous form. But what if I flipped the script? What if what it truly feared was the light? The creature shrieked as I lifted my hand. I didn't carry a flashlight, a weapon of any kind. Instead, I simply opened my phone and cranked the screen brightness to maximum. A small thing, a rectangle of harsh, ordinary light. The mirror bubbled and warped, smoke billowing from the frame. The creature let out a roar of pain so intense it vibrated the air. Yet, it couldn't escape. And with each second, I held the light against the glass. The creature seemed to warp, to shrink. And then, an idea struck me. One born of desperation and more than a little spite. If this thing had been conjured from my story, amplified by the online obsession surrounding it, well, wasn't the internet itself just a vast collection of stories in the end? I swiped through my phone, not even bothering to read what I brought up. News articles on the latest viral pet video. Snippets of arguments on obscure fan forums, badly, spelled memes about breakfast. Every scrap of mundane human digital existence pumped out into the light of my screen. The effect was immediate. The creature wailed, its form becoming less distinct with each tweet I scrolled past. This wasn't just light. It was the absence of darkness, the sheer crushing banality of modern life an assault on its very essence. The warped mirror frame cracked, then spiderwebbed, the creature shrinking to a speck of darkness at its heart. I couldn't end it completely. It was too intertwined with my own work for that. But maybe I couldn't reduce it, diminish it, turn it back from a monstrous predator into the literary equivalent of a bad cold. With a final triumphant scroll through some particularly inane celebrity gossip, the mirror pulsed and shattered inward. Not with a burst of force, but like a deflating balloon. The shreds of glass dissolved into motes of shadow, and a ripple pulsed outward, violently resetting the warped geometry of the twisted apartment. I collapsed to the floor, gasping for breath. The hunger had retreated to a dull ache, manageable. Outside, sunlight streamed through newly, normal windows. I had to get out, get away. But first, there was something I needed to do. Sitting down at my miraculously intact laptop, I hesitated. This whole ordeal had begun with a story, and it would only end with one. I began to type. It wasn't a tale of terror this time, but one of a strange, fleeting encounter of the inexplicable that respectable that recessed back into the corners of existence. I wrote about an odd, unsettling story found on some backwater online forum, one that vanished without a trace. I finished it off with the very real possibility that none of it had actually happened at all. Hitting publish felt strangely anticlimactic. It wasn't a victory, not exactly. More like a truce, the creature, out there in the vastness of the internet, was diminished. Less a monstrous predator, and more a slightly unsettling footnote. In the ongoing saga of what humans share online, it would likely find its way back, feed on other fears, twist other words. But maybe, just maybe, it wouldn't be my words next time. I had faced the darkness, 
And that, in the end, was a horror story with an ending I could live with. Thanks for listening. If you like the story, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel, and I look forward to your comments. See you in the next video.